All right, so the, the agenda for today's town hall, first, we're gonna talk through the uh, Canvas adoption rates that we're seeing, and we're gonna provide some insights into the early instructor feedback we've received from those who have started using Canvas already. We're gonna provide an update on the bulk migration of courses from Gaucho Space to Canvas, as well as information about the archive of past Gaucho Space courses. We'll have a demo and an overview of navigating Canvas, and then we'll talk about the best ways to get started uh, moving from Gaucho Space to Canvas. Uh, then we'll highlight our support opportunities and upcoming trainings and ways you can get help in getting started in Canvas. And then we'll have some time at the end for open Q&A. So please do submit your questions at any time using the Q&A feature. So on the bottom of your screen, you should see the Q&A section. Uh, at any time, submit your questions. You can submit questions if you have them now uh, or as they arise during the, the event. We'll address some of them um, online and then we'll try to answer any questions at the end that we didn't get to in the chat. All right, so first I wanna provide an overview of the Canvas adoption and our early instructor feedback that we've received. So we started uh, with a small pilot in spring quarter of summer uh, 2022, and then uh, expanded that out in summer 2022. We saw 14 courses on uh, on Canvas and 665 in Gaucho Space in the summer. Uh, in fall, we opened it up to anyone who wanted to use Canvas as an early adopter. And we had 191 courses on Canvas to 1271 in Gaucho Space. In winter, uh, we have about a third of all of our courses in Canvas. We have 511 courses that are being offered in Canvas and 10, 10, uh, 1,018 that are offered on Gaucho Space. So we've received a lot of feedback from our uh, initial fall pilot in particular uh, about what the experience was uh, in using Canvas. We'll do another survey this quarter to try to get some more feedback on um, what instructors are experiencing. Our first question was um, to describe how getting starting with Canvas was for instructors. Uh, and 80% of instructors said it was either easy or somewhat easy. Uh, and then we had a few instructors uh, identify the transition as difficult or somewhat difficult. And we'll talk about some of the, the pain points that we've seen and how we can help people get through them. So we asked instructors what they like about using the Canvas platform, and they highlighted a few different areas. Uh, the ease of dragging and dropping items into modules. We'll talk more about modules today. And also the gradebook being easy to use. Uh, another instructor identified Canvas as being sleek, versatile, and aesthetically pleasing. A second instructor identified the gradebook as being better than Gaucho Space in terms of setting it up and implementing it across the class site. One instructor identified the to-do list and identified it as user-friendly as particular highlights, and another instructor said it's better in every way. We asked instructors about benefits they've seen when using Canvas when compared to Gaucho Space. Uh, one instructor identifies it as easier to use for students, easier for the instructor, in particular quizzes and assignment administration is easier, and it's a huge improvement over Gaucho Space. Another identified the navigation and defined it as less clunky. One instructor singled out the assignments due dates feature, which is a nice list of, of what's upcoming. And another instructor identified easy peer review, and in particular, easier to use than Eli review. So we also asked about some challenges that we've seen uh, that instructors had in using uh, Canvas. Uh, one instructor identified that the course architecture for Canvas is different than on Moodle. And that this was kind of a brain shift that they had to go through in order to build their course. And originally they tried to kind of mimic what they had in Gaucho Space, uh, which was possible, but didn't work well on Canvas. So they had to kind of redesign their course a little bit. And we'll talk about some areas in which you may need to do that. Another instructor identified grading flexibility as a limitation of Canvas. Uh, so we've, we've heard that the grading is generally easier to use, but it's less flexible than what you had in in um, Gaucho space. And we'll talk about some, some particular areas um, in which that is the case. And a few instructors identified the Gaucho space welcome message as a feature that they missed um, in transitioning to Canvas from, from Gaucho space. So I want to talk now about next steps uh, for 
the upcoming spring quarter and also for summer 2023. So in spring, instructors can teach either on Gaucho space or using Canvas. And courses can be created now for spring by logging into Gaucho space and accessing the course site creator block. So if you want to teach in either Canvas or Gaucho space, you can log into Gaucho space and on your home screen, you can activate your course in either platform. For summer, all courses are going to be in Canvas unless an approved exception has been granted. We have an exception request form that's on our website, canvas.ucsb.edu slash transition. The exception requests uh, for the summer are due on June 1st, 2023, and we'll evaluate based on the impact on students. Uh, one note that any registrar designated fully online courses are going to be automatically approved for an exception if they're requested. We know that those courses had a lot of development time put into them. So if there's a need to remain in Gaucho space for the summer, this summer, they can do that. And then by fall, there will be all courses will be in Canvas and there will no longer be any exceptions allowed. So I want to talk a little bit about how we're moving materials from Gaucho space to Canvas in terms of this bulk migration of courses that we're doing, and also the archive of uh, past courses we're standing up. So we are moving two years of courses that were taught on Gaucho space automatically into Canvas. So any courses that were off taught in summer 2021 through this coming spring quarter, 2023, will be migrated automatically from Gaucho space to Canvas, excluding any student activity or submissions. So all the course content is going to be moved over automatically. So we're moving these courses in scheduled waves. And the first wave is going to be available next week on March 1st. And this is going to include spring 2022 and summer 2022 courses. Uh, the idea would be these are going to be the most useful in many cases for instruction this coming spring quarter and going into summer sessions. We'll also be migrating uh, the, the remainder of courses uh, prior to fall 2023, likely in two more ways, um, tentatively May 1st and August 1st. Uh, but we're working with an outside vendor uh, to make sure that we can deliver all those courses over. So I want to talk about what to expect from a migrated course site with these automatically migrated course sites um, that are being moved from Gatcha Space to Canvas. The first thing is we've provided a basic template with a home page that's linking to all of the migrated weeks or topics. Most course content, including files, course activities, the question banks, and an archive of old instructor announcements will actually be included in the migration. In the migration, weeks or topics from Gaucho Space will be coming over as modules, which will mirror the content from Gaucho Space. We'll talk more about modules in a minute. There's also a course exception log for things that don't migrate or things that aren't available to be moved into Canvas. So I want to give you kind of a vis visual of what it's going to look like when you have a course that's in Gaucho Space and a course that gets migrated into Canvas. So here we have a course site with its layout for weeks and some extra sections on it. And this is the homepage of that course. When it gets migrated over to Canvas, we have our, our basic template applied. We have a kind of default image that an instructor can update if they want to have a nice image on their, on their homepage. And each of the, the weeks or sections get linked on this homepage. These are modules in Canvas. In addition, the content within the weeks or sections is getting migrated over. So here we have from the same course, week seven, and some of the materials that were on that course. And this is in Gaucho space. And the automatic migration to Canvas brings those same materials over, mapping them to the Canvas functionality. I want to talk now about the long-term timeline of the Gaucho space decommissioning this year and the archive of past courses. So courses prior to those two years and what how we can get access to them in Canvas. 
So on December 1st, 2023, the end of this year, Gaucho Space and the Gaucho Space Archives, which is 2011 to 2023 courses, will no longer be accessible. We are standing up an administrative archive, which will house Gaucho Space courses dating back to summer 2015. And by administrative archive, this means that it's an archive that support staff are able to access to pull materials into Canvas. So all of these courses going back to summer 2015, by request, we can move any of those courses in the future into Canvas. So if an instructor is teaching a course that they haven't taught since 2017, for example, they can submit a request to us and ask us to move those materials into Canvas in the future. The archive will also house some access to historical student submission and grade data, which can also be requested. For example, if a student took an incomplete and it was a course on Gaucho space and the instructor is looking for their grade information to get them going to complete the course on Canvas. Note that courses prior to summer 2015 will no longer be available. So we have some information on our website about how to create a backup of a course if an instructor is interested in saving a course that they haven't taught um, after 2015, anything taught after 2015, we will be putting into the administrative archive. But courses prior to that, instructors can save those courses as backup files, or you may want to download uh, course materials and save them offline. So this has a little more information about the different Gaucho Space servers and how we're handling them in terms of the automatic migration and the administrative archive. So currently we have four different servers that are housing Gaucho Space courses going all the way back to summer 2011. And what we are doing is we are migrating all courses from the last two years, which is currently 7,175 courses. It's gonna get larger with spring quarter because all the spring quarter courses on Gaucho Space will be migrated automatically to Canvas. Another 41,321 courses will be preserved in the administrative archive. And then 15,414 courses are being sunset completely and they will no longer be available. So these are the courses from summer 2011 to spring 2015 on those two archive instances and they're no longer going to be available after December 1st. Uh, in most cases, instructors have, have materials on those courses that they've taught again, and they're in the future versions of Gaucho Space. So they either be in the administrative archive or they would have been mi migrated automatically. And in those cases, instructors don't need to do anything. But if there's a course that you haven't taught prior to 2015, you may want to save a backup of that course. All right, so I'm going to pass it over to uh, Gus, who's going to talk about navigating Canvas and give us a, a little demo, and then he'll pass it over to Samantha. All righty. <clears throat> so yeah, we've touched on some of the transition processes, um, but I'm going to touch now on some of the actual look and feel of Canvas. So if you're a new user coming into Canvas for the first time, uh, what you'll want to do is go to canvas.ucsb.edu. And this is going to be the Canvas landing page. Um, we'll touch on a few uses of the page, uh, but right now I'm just going to point out you'll use the UCSB login, the UCSB users button here. And then you'll be prompted to sign in using your UCSB net ID and password. So once you sign in, you'll be brought to your Canvas dashboard. It'll look similar to this. And if you're an instruct, a recent instructor, you've been listed as instructor of record, um, you'll find that we've created a Canvas sandbox site for you already. Um, it'll be in this list of unpublished courses here. So here, Professor Gaucho has a sandbox. And the sandbox site is really where you as an instructor can try out Canvas, look at the functionality, see how a course site operates, and just familiarize yourself with the platform. There aren't gonna be any students in the course, it's really just you in the course and a way for you to get used to the platform. And then um, Brett mentioned these migrated courses that will be coming over. So you will see those courses in this unpublished courses list. And they'll be listed here 
with the course name and the quarter that they are coming from. And so those migrated materials will be in those courses. Um, a distinction I'll point out when you look at your dashboard, you have this unpublished courses and then published courses. Similar to Gaucho Space, when you get a course site, by default, it's not shown to students. An instructor has to actively choose to show that course to students. And in Canvas, uh, that's replicated with this distinction of unpublished and published. So we have this nice uh, distinction on the dashboard, which courses are published, accessible to students, and which courses are not and unpublished. So another thing on the dashboard on the right side here, we have the to-do list. Um, as Brett mentioned in the feedback, um, this is a popular and helpful um, item for both instructors and students. Um, so the to-do list from the instructor side, this will let you know things that need grading, how many activities and assignments need grading. And then you also have the coming up list. These are upcoming activities in any course that you're in. And then on the student side, they would see in their to-do list, you know, upcoming assignments, upcoming due dates in their various courses. And then also on the student side, they would have this recent feedback area, and this will show them any um, assignments, any feedback that they're getting in their courses and a quick link to those activities. So again, this is a quick rundown of the dashboard. Um, next, I'll touch on the what we call the global navigation features. These are the items that run along the left side here. So the dashboard, and we just touched on the account. These are your account settings. So when I click on account, I get this sub menu with the various features within. I'm not gonna go into each of these, but I'll highlight a couple features. Um, the first one here is notifications. And this controls all the notifications that Canvas will send you. So by default, we pull your UCSB email address that's stored in the Campus Identity Management System and put that into your account. So that email will get account get notifications sent from Canvas. But if you find that you're you know, getting too frequent notifications from Canvas or not enough about a certain aspect of a course, in Canvas, you can adjust those notifications in your notification settings here. One thing we've heard from instructors, um, some of them like to get a copy of an announcement they send out. Um, if you want to get a copy of any announcement you create for your course, you can set that in your notifications settings that, as an example. Um, the other one I'll point out here is profile. Um, the main uh, piece of the profile setting is the uh, profile picture. If you go into your profile settings, you can upload a profile picture to be attached to your account and it'll appear and be visible to students. And we are looking to incorporate student ID photos um, that should be coming later this year. So moving down, um, the next one I'll touch on is courses. Um, and you may be thinking, you know, I see my courses on my dashboard. But as you can imagine, um, teaching a few quarters in Canvas and then also with your migrated courses, your dashboard can become quite cluttered with the number of courses you have on there. And so to kind of clean up your dashboard, you can click on courses and then go to all courses. And this is gonna list every course that your account has access to. So if you only wanna see certain courses on your dashboard, what you can do is highlight them and favorite them with this starring option. And so these starred courses are the only ones that are going to appear on my dashboard. But if for whatever reason I need to jump back to a course that isn't on my dashboard, I can again go to my all courses and then say jump to this old course that was taught in summer 2022. I can go into that course and access it. All right, moving down, uh, the next piece I'll touch on is the calendar. Um, we found this to be a very helpful um, piece for students. Um, instructors find benefit in it too, but students in particular uh, really like the calendar feature as it shows them all of the upcoming due dates for their various courses. So this is kind of an example view. Um, I've got you know, an upcoming assignment, an upcoming quiz, a discussion. 
And as a student, I can just click on it, get the details, and jump right into that assignment. So it's a great way as a student to kind of see the course from a calendar view and make sure they're keeping up with those upcoming due dates. And on the right side here, this is how you can toggle different calendars. So these are all different courses. So I can click on one of these to show those due dates in the calendar view. Okay, next on the global navigation is inbox. Um, this is really replicating the peach mail functionality that uh, you may be used to in Gaucho space. So this is how you as an instructor can send out messages to a whole course, uh, individual section. You can also just email say your teaching assistants and you can also email specific students from the inbox feature. And by default, any message you send from the inbox is gonna be come into that student's uh, UCSB email. It'll come from Canvas into their email um, using that notification app. And then next one down, history. Uh, this is just a quick running list of recently accessed pages in, Gaucho, or in Canvas. So if you're jumping around and you want to get back to a page that you were on you know, a minute ago, but you can't remember how you got there, you can use this list to kind of quickly get back there. And second to last year, uh, Canvas Commons. <clears throat> this is a place that anyone using Canvas, not just at UCSB, but any institution that uses Canvas, um, a user can publish material to the Canvas Commons. So these can range from whole templated courses to individual pages, a quiz, an assignment, uh, any feature of Canvas can be published into the Commons. So we've published a few pieces um, in the commons. So we've got our UCSB weekly template. And we also have the UCSB weekly homepage that Brett uh, briefly highlighted. Um, we've also got another instructor who shared a piece into the commons. But if you're interested in incorporating any of these, you can bring these right into your course. And then lastly, the help option. Uh, these are just various help avenues from within Canvas, both to us at UCSB and then Canvas's help. And we'll touch on a few help resources at the end of today's uh, town hall. So with that, I'm gonna pass it to Samantha to go over some actual course navigation. Yeah, so now that Gus has talked through how you can access, you know, Canvas's global navigation, kind of getting lay of the land, I'm going to walk through what Canvas looks like at an individual course level. Again, you can access your courses from the courses menu or from your dashboard. You would click on the card uh, straight and it'll take you into the course. So if I click on the Canvas basic sandbox, I'll now be entering into that specific specific course. And you'll see a course navigation menu has popped up here on the left hand side, and it's taken me directly to the home tab. So the home tab is the first place that you enter each and every time you click on the course. And it's the first place that students enter each and every time they enter the course. And so it's a great place uh, to provide information that you want students to see front and center each and every time they access your course page. Uh, instructors have different options for the home page. Uh, we're using the standard one, which will come with those migrated courses, a course template. Uh, but there are various options that can be chosen. And we go through each of these options in our basics training. And we'll talk about the training options uh, at the end of today's session. And we'll talk about why you might use uh, a different home page from the default. But this is us using the standard default, uh, what they call pages, front page, uh, home page. This homepage shows the most recent announcements here at the top. Uh, and so these will be class-wide communication that's been sent out from the instructor, from the TAs. And these would have also been sent to students uh, by default to their UCSB email address. And then the most recent ones are right here at the top. So students can quickly access kind of what has been sent out most recently. 
And then there's also this customizable page down here at the bottom. So there'll be links to each of the modules or sections, and this course is broken up into weeks, and so students can quickly jump to week one or week two and see all of the resources and activities associated with that module. Uh, but instructors can customize this page using this edit function. For example, you can uh, add in, instead of using the stock photo, uh, you can add in a photo that's relevant to your content area or to the course. Uh, maybe you want to include information about how students can get a hold of you or your office hours or a little bit about yourself. Maybe you want to tell students a little bit about the course or what to expect, the course outcomes. Really, this is super a customizable space for you to put information that students will see each and every time they access your course. This course navigation menu is really one of the big differences between Canvas and Gaucho Space. Uh, Gaucho Space really had, once you entered the page, really everything was there, right? You just scrolled down and it was all of the information. Canvas, on the other hand, has this course navigation menu that allows you to jump around to different entities of your course. So for example, I can click on announcements and it'll take me to all of the announcements that have been sent out to the course. Again, these are course-wide communications or section-wide communications. Because I'm an instructor from this announcements page, I can also send students a new announcement. Uh, maybe I want to remind them about, you know, upcoming office hours or an upcoming assessment. All of this can be done from this left-hand announcement menu. Similarly, the assignments menu here on the left-hand side, if I click on assignments, now Canvas is showing me all of my assignments in the course. Not only uh, do I see all of the assignments that I have, and this will include assignments uh, activity types where students are uploading uh, a file or they're typing directly into Canvas for submission. Uh, it'll also include grade scope assignments or iClicker. It'll include your graded discussions or quizzes. And I can also create new assignments directly from this assignments tab. I can group them. So here I, uh, and then weight those groups according to my syllabus. So for example, if I have a participation and attendance with 10% of the grade, I can create a group or what Gaucho Space called category, put the appropriate assignments in, making it easy to drag and drop, uh, and then weight them accordingly. Uh, so this left navigation really allows uh, you to break down the different entities of your course and show the different you know, assignments or discussions or quizzes from this left navigation. One of the things that we've really uh, uh, talked a, a lot about, but maybe I didn't show you, is this modules feature. And modules from the left-hand navigation menu is really where students live in the course. It allows you to set up the scope and sequence to decide what is the order that I want to present all of my different assignments and files and quizzes to so that students pace through the course in a flow that makes sense according to um, the instructor. So modules can be broken up. It can be topics based. It can be weeks based like we have in this course example. It could be entity based, but it's a way for you to dictate kind of the scope and sequence or flow of the course for students to progress through. So here I'm again on modules from the left hand course navigation, and I have a module here for course resources. I can create additional modules using this plus modules button. And once my module is created, now I can link things. I can link files such as the syllabus. I can link content uh, that I'm typing directly into Canvas. Similarly, I can link discussions or assignments, quizzes, any activity type that I want, I can link to a specific module so that students are aware of kind of all of these different 
entities are contextualized into a flow that makes sense for the course. So here, for example, I have week one and I have a file and a video that I want students to watch. And then I want them also to post and submit a reflection. And so this module, again, allows you to set that scope and sequence and then link various entities to that for the flow of the course. So each of these navigation menus here on the left-hand side uh, are customizable. So as the instructor, you can decide what you want students to be able to access from the left-hand side. So for example, uh, maybe I'm not using quizzes, or maybe I don't want students to be able to access files in this general repository. I only want them to be able to access the files in the flow that I've created for them in modules. Uh, as an instructor, I can actually customize this menu so students don't have access to specific features. And all of that is done in the course settings tab using the navigation submenu. So for example, I can say, hey, I don't want students to see the quizzes from the left-hand side. So I can take quizzes and I can drag it down to disable or hide it from students. Now, students will only be able to see quizzes uh, if I've linked to them in a module. Similarly, I can drag files to hide so that students don't see kind of the whole repository uncontextualized. They're only seeing the files that I've linked uh, in the specific ways in which I want students to access those files. Conversely, there might be tools down here that you do want to appear for students. So for example, maybe I am going to have Zoom classes or Zoom office hours. I can drag up Zoom in the place I want so that it'll appear for students in the course navigation menu on the left. They can click on it and access those Zoom meetings. Same thing for things like Gradescope or GauchoCast or Nectar. I can choose which things I want to appear for students based on the tools that I'm using or how I want students to access those materials. So I've dragged quizzes down here to disable it and I've enabled Zoom, for example. And once I click Save, I'll now see quizzes are hidden from students. I have this little uh, eyeball with the slash through it, where Zoom is now visible for students. It's up here at the top where I've placed it. And so one of the things, uh, last things I wanna talk about for courses is we've really been looking at courses from a instructor's lens, but it can be helpful to see how your course is displayed from a student's perspective. Uh, so on many of these pages uh, here, for example, on the home tab, in the top right hand corner, you'll see this student view button. And if I click on this, it'll take me to the course in a, a student's perspective. It'll, this purple box comes around. It tells me that I'm currently logged in as a student. And now I'm accessing the course from a student's perspective. Uh, for example, I hid quizzes, and so I don't see that any longer on the left-hand side. And one of the nice things about Canvas's students' view perspective is I can actually not only see how the course is, but I can actually experience the course as a student. So I can click on an assignment, and I can see the instructions that I've typed out to see, uh, and given to students. And this is how students will see this assignment. I can go further and I can actually submit an assignment on behalf of my test student to make sure that the portal is ex accepting submissions that I would expect it to submit. And so this student view is a really nice way for you not only to see how is this course um, looking to students, but also how is this course being experienced by students. And so with that, um, I'll go ahead and I'll leave student view here. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back to Gus who will just highlight some of the differences between Canvas and Gaucho Space uh, now that you have a, an idea of what uh, Canvas looks like.
Right. Yeah, so we've given you a little insight into both uh, the dashboard coming into Canvas and then a little Canvas navigation. And now we want to talk about um, as you come from a Gaucho space perspective, coming into Canvas, uh, kind of some of the differences and where you can get that similar functionality that you might be used to in Gaucho space. So when we think about some of the key differences between the two platforms, um, in Gaucho space, we actually had a lot of ways instructors could customize and change their course um, and personalize their course. And over time, we've actually heard from students that this was actually somewhat of a detriment to them, um, going from one course to another and seeing different layouts, different course formats. Um, it sometimes was hard for them to navigate as they went from course to course. And so something we see as a benefit, um, both on the instructor side, as you get a new course, you'll know exactly what it should look like, how it should operate. On the student side as well, they're gonna see that consistency in Canvas. Um, so really where that home page is, that's where you can customize things. But by and large, one course in Canvas is gonna operate and look very similar to another course in Canvas. And then thinking about how the course operates um, from the navigation side, that left-hand menu that um, Samantha really emphasized and showed, you know, there's multiple pieces of your course. That's really a, a big change as you think about coming from the Gaucho space side. Gaucho space, we're used to that one page that's essentially the course. You have your weekly sections and you have all the content and activities in those sections on that one page. Um, again, coming to Canvas, you have that left-hand navigation, you have different links within your course and different features of your course. And so that, that change is something we've seen. It, um, you know, it just takes a bit to understand that navigation and that way of how your course is gonna operate. But with that, I think the, a difference but a somewhat similar function is the weekly sections that you're used to in Gaucho space those are replicated in the modules area. Um, Samantha highlighted the modules, and that's really where you organize the content. So you can create content and you can access content in different areas in your Canvas course site, but the modules area is really where you contextualize and organize that content that you've created. And it'll be really apparent when you open your migrated courses, that same structure that you have in Gaucho space, those weekly sections, or if you use topical sections in Gaucho space, those will come over as modules in your migrated courses, and the content in those sections will be replicated in those modules. Um, so I think that's what you'll really get a sense of how modules operate when you look at your migrated courses that way. Okay, so thinking about you're coming into Canvas uh, for the first time and you want to understand, you know, how much how much effort am I going to have to put into this? How much, you know, rethinking of my course am I going to have to think about? And when we think about the core um, functions of the learning management system, we mainly think of, you know, sharing files, collecting assignments, and communicating with students. And these features, these core features are all functioning, all present in Canvas, and they operate close to identical um, in how they operate within Canvas as they did in Gaucho space. So when it comes to grading, um, the Gaucho or the Canvas uh, grading interface is called SpeedGrader. And the three you know, core activity types, you've got the assignment where students are uploading a file often, and then you also have a discussion, you know, in Gaucho space, we know them as forums. In Canvas, they're called discussions. And then you also have quizzes. And if you're grading any of these activities, you're gonna use the speed grader interface. Um, this is kind of nice in Gaucho space, you graded things in different ways, depending on the activity. And in Canvas, there's consistency in those grading, uh, in grading those activities across each activity. And the speed grader interface is very similar to the PDF grading interface. If you use that in Gaucho space, where you can annotate, markup, 
give written feedback, and then enter a grade, and then move on to the next student. And then when it comes to communication, um, the communication channels that you may be familiar with in Gaucho Space, Peach Mail, and Instructor Announcements, those are replicated with the inbox feature and the announcements feature. So inbox, really good for if you need to follow up with a specific student or a, a select few students, you can message those students from the Canvas inbox feature. You can also message a whole section or even the whole course, very similar to Peach Mail. And then the announcements feature, that's often used for course-wide announcements, course-wide uh, messages that you need to send out, or you can also send it out to specific sections. So TAs can use the announcements feature to reach out to just their section. And the welcome message feature, um, we heard that in the feedback. There's not a direct equivalent, but you can use announcements, and announcements will, the recent announcements will be displayed on your course homepage. So a student who maybe enrolls late will see those recent announcements at the top of the homepage in the course in Canvas. And then lastly, the file sharing. Um, so adding files in Canvas. Uh, something we found in Gaucho Space, when you add a file in Gaucho Space, depending on the browser that a student uses or the file type, sometimes that that file didn't render or wouldn't be shown directly in the Gaucho Space course site. Students would have to download it. By and large, we've seen that the files that are added to a Canvas course site, their students are able to view them in Canvas. So they're not having to download and open that file. Um, they're able to see it embedded in the course site, and it's really user friendly in that way. OK, so kind of one of the, the changes in understanding how your course is going to operate. Um, is when we think about a course page in Gaucho Space and when you want to add a text or rich content directly to the course page, you could use a label or a section description to display that information. So in, in Canvas, the modules area really isn't designed to work that way. So rich content that you want students to see, you'll actually use either a page or a label to give contextual information. So where you may have used labels in a Gaucho Space course site, again, you're going to be using pages and then also text headers, which are really helpful to group content. So on this slide, um, I have a, a screenshot of an example uh, module in Canvas. So I've got week one, that's the title of the module. And then under that, I've got week one information. And that's a page within Canvas. So students can click on that page. And then I could have you know, multiple paragraphs of information. I can have pictures. I can have other media that they can view on that page. But it's not going to be displayed directly on the module. It's going to be displayed on that page that students click in on the module. And then below that, in the example, I've got a text header for weekly readings. And so under that, I've got two files. And those could be the weekly readings for the week. And then under that, I've got another text header for activities. And then I've got a discussion that students can uh, click on and then participate in there. So that's another you know, big difference between the two platforms is when you want to have that you know, rich content information that you want students to be able to read and see, you're going to be using those pages and text headers to replicate that, that functionality. And then also as Samantha highlighted the home page. We found that that's a really good place for you as an instructor to customize and introduce the course and add a lot of you know media, images, and really you know personalize that and bring students into the course that way. Okay, and then moving on to our more advanced users are kind of you know, power users who are really using uh, Gaucho space in some high use or high um, kind of power user avenues. Um, some of this took the form of, you know, using the gradebook in ways that Moodle just allowed you to do some things behind the scenes. We've seen this with custom calculations and other kind of manipulations of the gradebook. 
Goucher or Canvas really tries to be as transparent as possible when it comes to grading and sharing that information with students. So if you found yourself, you know, doing curving grades and you know manipulating grades in a in a high uh, high use way, we found that the best option is to export those grades from Canvas and then do whatever calculations you need to and bring those grades back in. And then another area where we've seen, you know, some, uh, you know, just changing in understanding is certain quiz questions. So formula questions, closed questions, these kind of advanced quiz questions that were available in Gaucho space. Um, some of these are not direct, they're no direct equivalents, and they'll need a, a little manipulation as you can come into Canvas. And we do have a chart that goes over question type by question type of what the equivalent was in Gaucho space and what kind of the closest equivalent or the equivalent is in Canvas. And this is on our backup and restore from Gaucho space to Canvas article. And then some of the activities, some of the more advanced activities in Gaucho space, the blog, the wiki, lesson, book, and database, there are no direct uh, equivalent activities in Canvas, but by and large, we found that um, the use of pages uh, you can allow students to be able to edit pages and then linking between pages largely gets at this functionality of these activities that you may be trying to replicate in Canvas. And just to kind of sum up these advanced user issues, by and large, these are best addressed in a one-on-one -on -one basis. So we're happy to work with you to kind of understand what is your objective what were you doing in Goucher space and what is your goal? And we can work with you to kind of understand that and find a work through workflow that'll work with you in Canvas. And with that, I'll throw it to Samantha to kind of go over some of those uh, help and support avenues. Yeah, so just briefly here before we start getting to the Q&A uh, in the, uh, the last sets of Q&As that you've been typing in, uh, as Gus met, showed you at the beginning, the page that you go to log into Canvas, so this is canvas.ucsb.edu, uh, in addition to logging into Canvas, there are also two additional tabs. Uh, the support tab, which I'll highlight here, all the different things that that links to. And then there's also a tab on the transition. It contains frequently asked questions about the migration, uh, about this transition. It has the link for the summer exemption form, for example. All of that information can be found on the transition tab. Uh, and we're continuing to update both the support tab and the transition tab as we uh, pro uh, progress through the migration or through the transition. We uh, on this canvas.ucsb.edu on that support tab, uh, we have lots of upcoming training opportunities uh, over the next couple of weeks and months, and we'll continue to add to these uh, trainings throughout the summer and, and in the lead up to fall. These sessions are not only on just Canvas basics, so just, you know, like, how do I log in? How do I update my profile? How do I modify my course? Um, but also topic-based sessions. So, you know, learning, really diving deep into Canvas assignments or the Google integration feature with Canvas or giving grading and feedback. All of those sessions can be registered for canvas.ucsb.edu slash support. And uh, if you continue to check that page, we're continuing to add more and more sessions as time goes on. In addition to those training uh, opportunities, we also have uh, instructor, student, and staff support on Canvas. And one of the nice things is that Instructure, the company that owns Canvas, provides 24-7 support for instructors, for staff, and for students. This support can be phone, chat, or email. Uh, and so if you have a question, if you're like, hey, I don't know, like, should I push this button or this button? Something's not working the way I want it to. And it's, you know, Sunday at 11.50 p.m. You can reach out to Canvas and chat in. You can call in or email. And they have dedicated support staff ready to answer your questions. Similarly, if students are having issues on their Canvas, 
uh, they can reach out to Canvas support and help troubleshoot directly 24-7, 365. And that's in addition to the support that LSIT and Collaborate offer where we can help troubleshoot Canvas uh, locally at UCSB as well. We also have on-demand videos, uh, any of those trainings that you saw two slides ago, we are recording them and we're posting those recordings. So if you can't make it, you can watch uh, a recording of it. You'll find those on the support website. We're also offering department specific trainings. So we've been reaching out to chairs and business officers uh, to help coordinate if your department is interested in hosting a Canvas training for your faculty and graduate students. Uh, we can do those. We have a wide range of help center documentation, both Canvas documentation and documentation on UCSB's specific instance of Canvas. Things like, how do I integrate Gaucho Cast with Canvas? How do I add a UCSB user? How do I manage my wait list? All of that can be found on the support uh, tab, as well as best practices and common pitfalls, things we've learned, uh, instructors have told us as we've gone through this um, early adoption period. And then finally, as Gus mentioned, uh, we're here for one-on-one -on -one consultations as well. If you want to go through your course, if you have a specific workflow in Gaucho space that works really well for you and you want to know how to mimic that in Canvas, uh, we are here to support you. Shoot us an email at help at collaborate.ucsb.edu, and we are happy to meet with you one-on-one -on -one to talk about your specific course and your specific needs. And so with that, uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, go through some of these questions live with our time remaining, and Brett will moderate for us. All right, sure. We have uh, a few questions that weren't already answered in the Q&A. Please send in more questions if you have them. Uh, we have a few minutes. We'll try to address all of them. Um, if we don't get to your question, we may reach out and follow up offline. Uh, so we have a question about the homepage. And when we create modules on the home homepage, can we show them as tiles rather than bullet points to prevent the information as a better UI? Uh, I'll answer this one. Um, Currently, we have the, the one uh, template that we've designed. And uh, this template is actually just one of many that we're going to develop. So we're going to develop some other templates with different styles and also uh, with more content and in different teaching modalities. Uh, so stay tuned for UCSB specific ones. There are ways you can do this yourself um, if you don't want to wait for us to develop a template um, in terms of design on your homepage. All right, so next question. Question, uh, is there a feature in Canvas similar to Q&A form that is available in Gaucho space? Uh, Samantha, can you give us an answer on that one? Yeah, so uh, there definitely is. It's when you're creating the discussion, there is an option to require students to post before they can see their students' responses or their peers' responses. So that's a setting when you're creating the discussion uh, that most mimics that Q&A feature or forum option to require students. Perfect. Gus is showing this here now that users must post before seeing the replies. So a student must make their first initial post before they can see the responses of their peers. So definitely an option available in Canvas. All right. Thank you. Um, so Joe has a question. I enjoyed Gaucho Space quiz options for what to reveal to students after quizzes. For pedagogical reasons, I wanted students to see how many multiple choice items they got right, but not which ones or what the right and wrong answer was. Is this possible in Canvas? Uh, Gus, can you uh, talk us through that if you if you know the answer? Um, so there are is that granularity in um, Canvas when you want to give some information, but you want to discern what information students are getting. Um, those, it's a little different. You're probably familiar with the review options, that grid option in Gaucho space. Um, it's a little different in Canvas, but that functionality is there. Um, it's just a, the settings are a little different, but you can definitely restrict, you know, just showing them what information you want them to see and not necessarily all the quiz questions, all the right answers. Um, you can definitely set that up to your liking. All right, thank you. And uh, Joni asks, can you show us what the student calendar will look like if they have selecting all the courses to be viewed simultaneously? Just trying to get a sense of how user-friendly that will be. Um, Gus, maybe you have 
enough assignments so we can see multiple um, courses may not uh, be easy to demo. Yeah, I don't have a ton. Um, it's a little hard to see, but so like this, um, this is for my sandbox site and it's highlighted in a different color. Um, so it uses a different color shading to, to delineate between courses. Um, so that's how, kind of how it's shown in the calendar view. If you have multiple courses selected and you're looking at multiple due dates, um, hopefully that gets at the answer a bit, um, but you can definitely try and document that a little more clear. All right, thank you. And I'll, I'll answer this one. Megan asks about, um, as from an advisor's perspective, we often help students and faculty troubleshoot student enrollment in the Gaucho space. The general three principles we continually remind our students and faculty are as follows. It takes up to 24 hours for Gaucho space to notice new enrollments on gold. Newly enrolled students can be added directly to the course Gaucho space by the instructor or TA if they need course access earlier than that. And number three, settings can be enabled to allow guest or course crasher app access for students on a wait list for a course so they can get started on course material while waiting for a space to open up. So yes, uh, Megan, you ask if those principles generally function the same in Canvas. Uh, the enrollment processing, uh, same data feed we're getting from uh, the registrar for Gaucho space. So the timelines are the same. Instructors can add individuals directly to course sites, and they can also enable um, access to crashers. Uh, there's a few different ways to do that. It's a little different in Canvas. We are also trying to get from the registrar um, the waitlist data feed so that we can enable that for uh, immediate access if instructors want to do that. Okay, so uh, let's see. Is there a workshop function? Samantha, can you answer this? Yeah, so there's not a direct equivalent of workshop uh, function in um, in Canvas. There are some peer review options. So there's an embedded peer review feature uh, that is pretty easy to use. It allows students to review one and submit something and then review one another's work. Uh, and then there's also an external tool called Eli Review that uh, supports a kind of peer review process. But Cynthia, do you have any questions about how Workshop is using, if you could uh, let us know a little bit about how Workshop works for your specific class, we'd be happy to investigate the best options. Just reach out to us, help at collaborate.ucsb.edu. Um, we can set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation to make sure that there's a, an option that works for your course. All right, so uh, mark that one as answered. Okay, so I see the choice of Gaucho Space migrating my spring classes to either Gaucho Space or Canvas. Can I do the migration to both on my own then? Uh, yes, uh, Mitchell, you can uh, choose in spring quarter uh, whether to teach in Gaucho Space or in Canvas. Uh, again, we are doing the bulk migration of last uh, year's courses. So those will show up next week if you want to use any materials from those. We also have on our um, help pages a way that you can create a backup and restore it into Canvas if you wanna do that. So just reach out if you need any help um, on your course. And um, I wanna thank everyone for joining us. There's a couple open questions. We'll save these and try to reach out to, to folks offline. Um, but we've reached our, our time and thank you for joining us um, for our town hall. We're gonna have another town hall next quarter and we're gonna have some faculty talking about um, ways in which they've used Canvas.